So hi guys, we have another exciting guest with us. He is really deep into deep in, and uh, what exactly we want to understand from his that he is crafting solutions for Web two and Web three audience with impactful like uh, features which are there, which should be there in deep in industry. So let's try to know him. Let's try to know their solution and upcoming plans also. So let's know Marcus. Hi. Hi, hi Marcus. So Marcus. You are into deep in. There are lots of other projects also. Yeah. What sort of problem you saw, and what motivated you to solve this? Yeah. So in 2018, you know, we realized location gets a little spooky hack, right? We, we were dealing with IoT devices like uh, for GPS and Bluetooth speakers and those kind of things. We realized you can just easily spoof or hack them, right? And so we realized the world of tomorrow, where you have smart cities and self-driving cars and drones flying around by themselves, and you know most apps even on your phone are, are location dependent. Uh, you need to have more certainty around location, and so we decided to build a technology uh, which allows you to have a high degree of, of certainty for location. So you planned this solution for future. and now we are moving towards it yeah. uh, we are seeing too many smart devices smart glasses are there everything is being powered with ai and all so what do you think the speed at which we are growing in web 3 or in web 2 at what stage we will achieve that okay deepin is really in market it's uh, like in the household system like as we can see uh, there are alexa and all so how when when that time will be there i think it's 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 getting there you know like in a way consumers often don't see it right but if you think about data storage for example right there's a, a number of projects right which compete with amazon aws and google cloud and so on right to store data and you don't even know if your computer game is stored on an amazon server right or on a deep in device right or there is a solar right for solar for example there's a project called glow uh, if you are uh, you can put a solar on your roof right and share some data it's on a naked deep in device and and then it doesn't matter really uh, for you if you have a web 2 or web 3 version of it you know and uh, because it still gives you energy So Marcus uh, let's go to the basics uh-huh. let's try to understand what exactly deepin is mm-hmm. because they still in this whole ecosystem there are too many people in web2 space who don't understand uh, this technology they they know about iot they know about ai they know about everything but they don't know about deepin uh-huh. so how you can sum up deepin for a 5 year old yeah easy so Uh, the word deep in, even if you say it in the whole world, is decentralized physical infrastructure. I think a five-year-old won't understand, but uh, it's basically uh, it allows you to take something which, uh, let's say, big companies own, like uh, uh, solar or, or something that I mentioned before, and then you tokenize it and and you earn uh, the return from from that solar. Or you can, if you have. Uh, Let's say cell towers, right? You don't have a cell network in the place where you are, right? Then you can create some nodes. You you buy some devices, right? And those devices allow you to earn some tokens as other people use your cell network nodes. And and so for your place, for your area, you suddenly have cell reception for everyone. Everyone just can use their cell phones. But also, you know, if you have one of those nodes, you can or de- devices. you can then earn tokens and and participate in the network and it's basically it's like a democratic participation of of the system cool so you are creating a kind of a, a, a basic underlying asset into a real world asset like uh, then that that can be commercialized and then then we can take revenue out of it yep that's right ah, cool that's that's uh, really good and this is the professional part of marcus Let's uh, try to know the personal side of Marcus. Yes. Uh, how you started your career? Uh, what motivated you to shift into this deep in ecosystem? And moreover, how you got into the IoT ecosystem and all? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm originally from Germany, and I live in California now in San Diego. And uh, yeah, along the way, I, I lived in a few other countries, and I was always interested in, in tech, yeah, in emerging tech, in emerging markets specifically, and and uh, And then uh, 
I was lucky. I was CEO, founder, and CEO of some ad tech companies, which sold over the years, and then a data company as well. And and then in 2013, I started to mine Bitcoin, and then it was a good time. You know, that's 12 years ago, Bitcoin was worth almost nothing compared to today's prices, and so we had a crazy amount of Bitcoin and. Uh, and uh, then I, I, I really got into it. I believe in this, like, the whole crypto idea of like, it's borderlessness, right? Like we as, as humans control our own destiny, not uh, governments and so on. And, and it allows you to, to move your assets from one place to the other, but also it, it, it felt like being a hippie a, a little bit, right? And, and, and I really liked that. And, uh, and so I became involved there a little bit. And then, uh, you know, we stopped the Bitcoin mining like in, in like 2015 or so. And, and it took a few more years. You know, I did IoT then, uh, location IoT. And then, you know, we realized it gets spoofed to hack and we started XYO in 2018. And the interesting thing, you know, when we launched the, our project XYO, Nobody spoke about the deep in, you know, deep in is a word from 2022. And what we did actually is like, you realize that in a blockchain project, the most sustainable ones are the ones which build real business models, right? And, and because mod, if you, in retrospect, you see most projects from that time, they are, they're not in existence anymore, right? Because they didn't build real business models. And so we built just a real business model. And in the end, it turns out it's deep in, you know, which was coined in 2022 by Masari. So Marcus, you started your journey from mining, uh -huh. you went into IoT and then deep in. Yeah. What's next in XYO in the, this deep in world? Yeah, so we built a lot of stuff over the last seven years. We have great partners, we have lots of revenue and, and life's generally good for us. We have more than 8 million nodes, I think we're the largest deep in as well. And uh, we are now just announced that we're launching uh, our own XYO layer one blockchain. And that basically puts all the things we've built over the last seven years together. It's like very data centric. It's a data blockchain for data collection and validation and verification. Because as you know, you know, to store even an image on Ethereum or Solana, it's like very, very expensive. But uh, on our blockchain, it's going to be different. It's very data centric. And so uh, we're launching that and we're launching a new token as well called the XL1 token, which is going to be the in for the internals of the XYO layer one blockchain. So it's for gas and transactions. And then the XYO token is for the deep in ecosystem, deep in rewards, staking and governance. And so it's like the yin and the yang. One of them is external, one of them is internal to our ecosystem. Got it. So once this chain is live, it's the main net is there. What sort of opportunities it will uh, get for builders uh -huh. to build something on this chain? Because if you are able to uh, give a platform to builders, yeah. you will automatically attract the uh, users also. So what sort of opportunities, uh, if you can list some like three or four, yeah. which builder can get from like by while building on your chain? Yeah, so it, it's, it's ideal for data heavy uh, applications like deep in AI, real world asset type yeah. stuff and, uh, and things which creates a lot of gaming, for example, and we work with some gaming projects or stuff as well. And uh, for them, it's, it's really ideal because it's, it's made for those ecosystems, it's made for data. So any specific uh, example, like you mentioned about data storage, but let's suppose XYU chain is live, uh, can developer build something related to data storage and solve the issues of data storage using your chain or what sort of games like what sort like the storage part of games it's obvious yeah. it's there like uh, that would be on the on your chain any other feature you want to uh, like you are providing it for developers like uh, as we know uh, onboarding the UX UI is a huge problem in Web3 and connecting it uh, with a more complex solution like Deepin, right. it, it increases that flow uh -huh. again, it, it makes it complex. Yeah. So how you are planning to solve them? We are absolute experts in onboarding people who are not native to crypto and you know like you and I are maybe crypto nerds but most of the world isn't right? And so. We have 80% of the people who come into our ecosystem today are non-crypto users, but 95% of them redeem the points they earn for XYO, so they become crypto users. So we have millions there, and we plan to do the same thing for the XYO layer one. So it's like 
JavaScript integrations and everything that Web2 developers know as well, make it super easy to come in there. And it's not only for data storage, but also for data crunching and we have a data certainty uh, technology, which we, which we have and there's everything around data and, and people who are in data like BI, people who do business intelligence and other, other data people, they will have a very easy path to onboarding into our, into our ecosystem. Oh, nice! It's it, like it's uh, really nice to know that uh, you have that much in-depth uh, planning for uh, integrations and all, so that new onboarding can be really easy because uh, people have assets but they don't know how to transform into yeah. deep in ecosystem, and there the onboarding plays a vital role. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let's uh, try to understand the Dubai ecosystem uh -huh. as we uh, like come here at every year for token. So, how do you think Dubai and Token 2049 is playing a vital role for Web3 whole whole uh, market? Yeah, Dubai is such a vibrant place. You know, it's it's absolutely amazing. You know, the regulation is is, is friendly here, and it, it's 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 very welcoming. And, and so we see people from all walks of life and all nationalities and cultures coming together at Token here here in Dubai and. Often, if you go to other places, it's not so international. You know, it's like it's like one crowd seems to like dominate. It's diversified. You know? Yeah, and here it's very diversified. It's the real idea of crypto, right? It's like your culture doesn't matter, your background doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or anything. You know, it's like you're part of crypto, and I think Dubai embodies that, and I love that. Yeah. Cool. Other than Dubai, any country, any city comes in your mind related to Web3? Uh, San Diego? No, I'm joking. Ah. <laughs> I took it. No, no, no. Ah. Uh, you know, uh, Singapore, obviously, you know, uh, a lot of products are there and a lot of exchanges and so on, and it's great there. And so I think Token has the other, other, uh, other event right in, in, in Singapore, and it's uh, as big, if not cool. San Diego. Cool. Uh, let's come up, let's try to understand the mindset of user. Who is, who is having a chain of assets, wants to uh, deploy them on a deep end. Mm -hmm. What would be the first steps, how they can uh, like initiate their path with XYU? Yeah, it's very easy. Just send an email to partnerships at xyo.network and we help you out. You know, we put you in, in contact with the right people on and our what team. What sort of assets can be uh, used in this infra? Like. Uh, uh, any any limitations or uh, like you mentioned about cell towers, solar, uh, what what's the range of these assets? Like anything can be? Yeah, anything can be. It's as yeah, so it generates data or if it needs proof of location to be able to say the cell tower, for example, is really where you say it is supposed to be and not that you spoof the location and have it in your mom's basement, for example, right? And, and so, so uh, you can provide that as well. Cool. Thanks a lot for yeah. sharing this valuable info information about DeepIn. Uh, we will love to sit with you on a long discussion where we are able to understand the whole point of view of different minds, uh, different sort of people who has uh, coming up with different sort of assets. Cool. Because DeepIn has like multi kind of a niche approach because you have multiple assets which right. can be put into this framework and can be monetized or can be revenue can be uh, as a part of like because right now people are not using it yeah. and uh, we'll love to have a long discussion with yeah, you and uh, thanks for giving this opportunity this was thanks awesome. thank you so much thank you